How's it going, everybody? Welcome back uh, to another review here. Um, today I'm going to be talking about the Asian film entitled Dream Home. Now, this is not to be confused with uh, the film that came out here in the States earlier this year called Dream House. Um, this is a film that actually came out officially last year from 852 Films. Um, it made its debut in 2010 at the Tribeca Film Festival. And, um, you know, I didn't really know anything about this until a couple of months ago uh, when I started hearing a few people talk about it. And, um, you know, we were looking through films on, uh, on the man the other night and uh, happened to find it. Um, i trying to think. It may have been under IFC Films. I'm not sure. But it was free. And... Um, so I figured, hell, why not check it out, you know, see what this is all about. And uh, basically, this tells a story of a woman named uh, Ching Lei, uh, Ching Lei, played by uh, Josie Ho. Um, and basically, she is, she's working a job at a bank, um, and she's trying to save money. She really, she has this childhood dream of owning her own place uh, at, by a waterfront in Hong Kong. And, you know, at the very beginning of the film, it tells how ridiculously high priced everything is there in Hong Kong, especially, like, uh, to own stuff by a waterfront. It's like, I mean, it's really ridiculous. I, I can't remember exact numbers. I, I wish I would have wrote it down, but it's, like, really fucking crazy. I think things are high here. It's, like, way worse there. But it's one of her dreams to have a home there. And the reason why is because she grew up around stuff like that. Like, she, she lived in, in one of those homes, and she's always wanted to have one of her own, so she spent her whole life saving for this. And, um, you know, like I said, during the day, she works for a bank, uh, like kind of like telemarketing or whatever. Um, and then at night, you know, we come to find out that she has another job, which is... Um, uh, quite different to say the least as her, as her day job is <laughs> um, I won't spoil that for you but uh, yeah um, so she basically ends up finding um, a place to buy like she has the money for it and everything well the stock market um, something happens with the stock market and the people that own the place decide that they want to up the price dramatically on her, like right when she's getting ready to buy it. Um, so she like wigs out. So, you know, she goes to drastic measures to uh, get this place and make it as her own, um, I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, that's the basic plot of the movie. Um, uh, this, this is a... It's a slasher film. I mean, it's pretty much just a straight-up slasher film uh, that goes way fucking over the top many a times, and it has some of the most creative kills that I've seen in quite some time, uh, to say the least. Uh, you know, the Asians, they, they're, they're either, it seems like they're either known for the ghost stories or the extreme gore splatter. This definitely is extreme gore splatter. Um, I, I really liked it. I mean, I really like this film a lot. I mean, as, as far as story goes, it's pretty simplistic. Um, it's pretty straightforward. There's not, you know, many twists and turns or anything. It's just, you know, you, you get the story and it just runs with it, you know. But there's nothing wrong with that at all, you know. I, I, I liked it that it was like that, that it wasn't, you know, you didn't have to overthink it, you know. Just, you just kind of roll with it. I mean... It jumps around a lot in the storyline, like it like it bounces back to when she's a child, and then it bounces into uh, like the '90s and just it, and, and, the, and the present time. It kind of bounces around a lot, you know, as far as that goes. Um, but I mean, if, if if you just watch it, it's not hard to follow at all. It doesn't, you know, it, it never lost me. Um, but yeah, as far as the kills go, man, there's there's some really creative stuff here. Um, I really don't want to spoil anything. Uh, some of it is, um, I think at the beginning it has like a very disturbing kill. Like it, it really like 
gives that gives you that oh shit factor, like damn, you know. <laughs> um, and then it kind of lightens up. I mean, it, it, it's I don't want to say they're lighthearted kills, but it kind of the tone kind of changes. It's not like the first kills, like you know, it really it really hits with a punch, you know. But after that, I thought they were a little bit. It, it just the tone was a little bit different. They didn't stay like serious and disturbing as it was in that first one, you know. Like um, another Asian film from this year, I saw the devil. You know that that movie was more uh, disturbing. I thought all the way through than this one. And I, I compare them because yes, they're Asian films, and yes, they're they're you know it's it's over the top gore, it's killing you know a lot a lot of killing all this stuff. But this film didn't seem as disturbing as that one, I guess you could say. And you know I, I can see some people watching this and thinking that you know the whole premise is just a little bit ridiculous. You know that somebody would go to this drastic measures, you know. And um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I could see that, but I, I, I liked it. I thought it was very well made. I mean, the, the effects were just phenomenal. And, um, <laughs> you know, th thinking of the kill scenes, one, one thing that comes to mind right off the bat is uh, it, it, it has a death scene that happens during um, a sex act, and it's unlike anything I've ever seen. I mean, I was horrified and cracking up all at the same time because it's... Wow, I mean, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about, you know, as soon as you see it. And, and those of you that have seen this, I'm sure you know what I mean. The, the death sex scene is just, <laughs> I, I just said, it, it, it blew me away. It was, it was probably my favorite scene of the movie, um, you know, not for perverted reasons, but for how, <laughs> for how creative it was. It was just, it was very creative. Um, but yeah, uh, the lead actress, uh, Josie Ho. Um, I thought she did really good. She's a gorgeous woman. Um, I thought she she was excellent in her role. I thought I thought really all the acting was very solid across the board, you know. And uh, I just I, I kind of I, I like the films like this that kind of have like the the social commentary to what's happening. I mean, I'm not exactly sure, you know, about Hong Kong and how high priced everything is, but I'm pretty sure. That it, that it is really ridiculous there. If I remember hearing correctly, like th this is pretty accurate as far as like how crazy things are, like portraying that part of you know the society. Um, but I, I really like how you know films like this are coming out where you know like, kind of like the Serbian film stuff like that. It's like you know it's I'm not condoning that film at all because I really don't like that film, but it is well made. But I like how you know these social commentary movies are coming out and they're they're taking a real life situation or predicament that people are going through and they're making it into a horror film. That's, that's what this was like. And uh, I, I just, I really enjoyed it. And I guess it's, it's um, it, it does have a Region 2 release, I believe. It may have a Region 1. Like, I looked this up on Amazon. There was a DVD release of it. Um, but I'm pretty sure there's a Blu-ray release coming up soon, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure exactly the date, but uh, Headbanger Horse Ball let me know about it. Um, and this is definitely a movie I'll buy. I mean, there's no doubt about it. You know, it, it's we're in November now. It's coming up to uh, the year-end list very soon. And um, Dream Home is definitely a film you will see on my year-end list. I mean, it, it's it's something definitely worth checking out. I mean, it blows away almost everything here in the States that I've seen this year. Um, so, yeah, guys, uh, as far as the rating goes on Dream Home, I'd probably give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, like I said, there, there's not a whole lot of story to it. Um, it's pretty straightforward, but there's some really good kills in it. There's really good gore. Um, I, I think a lot of horror fans are going to be really impressed with it. So, uh, yeah, definitely check it out. Um, like I said, it's on demand right now. I have Comcast. I don't know if it's on other, uh, you know, uh, uh, cable providers, but it may be. But, yeah, check it out, guys. That's Dream Home. So that's it for now, guys. Take it easy. Later.